always been confident once we got to the playoffs, we can compete with anyone. So the Lakers' playoff push, it continues tonight. They face the Bulls. L.A. lost on Sunday to Chicago in LeBron's return to action. Patrick Beverly, he let his former team hear it down the stretch. So this is a huge game for the Lakers. They enter the night as the nine seed, but they're a half game up on the Thunder and the Mavericks. So the Lakers, they play their next four games away from Crypto.com Arena before finishing their five-game road trip as the team is away. They're in a pivotal matchup against the Clippers right here on April 5th. So kind of a road trip. Maybe they'll beat the Rockets this time. Every game <laughs> is important for the Lakers here on out. All right, it's important. Maybe they'll beat the Rockets. How many are they going to well, go on? Why are you guys looking at me? What they lost to the Rockets he knows what he's time. doing. What it's are okay. they going to do on the road trip? What's your prediction? I don't think they're going to beat Chicago. I think they're, huh. I don't think they're going to beat Chicago, and then I think they're going to end the in. Okay, well, how many well. do they need to win for you to feel good about their final landing here? How many games they got left? I wasn't listening. They have five on the road. Seven, trip, seven total. total. I think they have to go five and four. That's, That's nine. nine. That's nine. Like, <laughs> I know you didn't go to Stanford Whoa, like today, bro. Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Arizona. Like, when your producer's Help. laughing in your ear. Help. Yo. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Get your fingers out of my arm, bro. Today, help us get We're back go on track. We're going to go six and four. I can't even right now, Richard. This is ridiculous. Right now, the Lakers, they're, what? Like, this is, this is obscene. <laughs> they, okay. They play the together. Together. Chicago, <laughs> Minnesota, Houston, do they beat the Bulls? They will have to. Yeah. I mean, they will absolutely have to. Will they beat the Wolves? They can, but the Wolves are playing better. Do they beat the Rockets? I mean, they better beat they the Rockets. They make a pick. Oh, I think the La- yeah, they're going to make a push. They're going to have to win. How many, how many wins? wins? They're going to win more than trip. they lose. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, that is more than they I lose. Don't know, I don't know how many they're going to win, but I know they better win tonight. Oh I know that LeBron Three. and AD better <laughs> get their lick back on what Patrick Beverly did. That's what I'm and saying. Can, and stop for a minute. Can we take a moment to appreciate Patrick Beverly and the Chicago Bulls, right? Because we talk about Rob Palenka and what he surrounded LeBron and AD with with the pieces. Let's talk about the addition of Patrick Beverly to the Bulls. This team was a disaster. So many rumors were leaked out about, you know, guys not getting along, guys not seeing eye to eye with Billy Donovan. Patrick Beverly came right into that locker room and developed chemistry. They're 10-6 and six with him on the squad. Mm. He's giving them that leadership that emotional guy that put the key in their back. We seeing we seeing great basketball out of Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan right now. This is not going to be an easy game for the Lakers. And mm. guess what? Their guards are going to have to strap down. Because what I saw the last time they played the Bulls was I saw Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan picking on Austin Reeves. So he's going to have to make sure he's ready to slide them puppies. Hey, but Austin Reeves, I mean, you don't bet against him so far this season. He's nope. really stepped things Austin up. against the Bulls. Perk, Perk, I got you. I got you. So what are you saying? They're going on the road trip. Five games. I'm saying three and two. I said they go I said they go four and one. They go lose tonight and win the rest of them. I'm with you. I think they're going to go before the Clippers game. So I'm, I guess well, the four-game well. road trip before they return to crypto. They got to go three and one to feel good about all of this. But before heading to Chicago, LeBron James, he made a pit stop in where, Cheney? H-Town. He H-Town, baby. H-Town last the Mavs, um, they're in a little bit of a dark place right now. A Those back-to-back bit. losses to the lottery-bound Charlotte Hornets, it really set off some alarm bells. So Dallas is currently five games under 500 since Kyrie Irving arrived. I don't think it's fair to put all of the blame on Kyrie Irving nope. like we talked about with Tim McMahon the other day. There are some bright spots here. So we're going to start with the positive today. Okay, good. Specifically, earlier this month, remember Kyrie Irving, Luka, they both dropped 40 against the Sixers. When this duo came together, it feels like this is more what Dallas fans had in mind. When they combined for 82 to beat a fully healthy the Sixers squad. So the Mavs are in Philly tonight in a rematch. It feels like that was so long ago, Richard. How can they duplicate that success? Well, it was long ago, and this is one of the things teams are, this was early in that stretch, and so teams were trying to figure it out. That's that one thing, like when you look at KD's numbers, it's like, you're still trying to figure out how to guard it, and I think that was the biggest thing that I saw that night, but as they progressed, teams are like, wait a second, we can attack them, we can do this, so in order for them to do that, but I think these two guys also need to be leaders. They need to be leaders, not only holding others accountable defensively, but holding each other in each in like themselves to the highest level of accountability because that's the only way it's going to do. They can put up 40 apiece and not win. But let's be real. That's their best shot right now. Their defense has really struggled the entire year, so I think it, they have to lean into their basketball IQ. Luka Doncic is one of the most doubled players on offense. Feed off of that. You're kicking out on the opposite side to Kyrie Irving, and so when I look at their 
their offense overall, they're going to have to commit, you know, control the game from start to finish. You don't want Joel Embiid to control it. You don't want Philly to have the pace, like which we know that pace is a little bit different. Right. You want those two guys to really do that. And we all know Luka's great in first and third quarters. Kyrie's great in second and fourth. Keep the ball in their hands. Let them make decisions. That's their best shot through their offense. Well, James Harden and Joel Embiid missed the last game against the Denver Nuggets. They're still listed as questionable for tonight. So perhaps Dallas could be catching a break here, although we expected them not to be out for an extended absence perk. <laughs> they going to be on the break going to Cancun because they ain't getting in. And I'm, and I'm talking about the play-in tournament. Like, let's be real. We, they had to score 40 apiece to beat Philly the last time that they played. That's how much they have to contribute on the offensive end. This roster is not good that's surrounding them when it comes to the Dallas Mavericks. And we already know that, yes, Luka, he tries, but he's going to get picked on defensively. We also know that about Kyrie Irving. And the best way to wear those guys down because you have to act so much for them on the offensive end is put them in pick and rolls and things to that nature and make them guard. But isn't Cancun that mentality that, all right, this might be a wash for us bringing these two guys together? Isn't that, like, horrible with all that's at stake, especially with risking it all by getting Kyrie and then Kyrie could leave? Don't you want them to say, hey, at least we got in the play and we built some kind of foundation? I feel like that's uh, the better alternative. I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i just stating the facts and the obvious. Right now, they're in the 11th spot. You got them getting in the play-in tournament? Not necessarily, okay, but I'm so just saying that you, you, you... And I ain't have them going to Cancun. Cool. Why you didn't say Jamaica? I mean, you could, we could have said Bahamas. We could have said Turks and Caicos. I'm just saying you've got to fight to the end because you know that it's bigger than just missing the playoffs. It's missing another star player that you really gambled a lot for. Well, if you make it to the conference finals and you show that type of progression, this is regression. Like, they are not doing well. Now, the one thing I will say again, mm -hmm. both of these guys are relatively on the younger side. You could use them as your pieces and then you build around. That is one of the issues when you make a trade midseason. When you make a trade midseason, you're giving up a lot of pieces. Look at Phoenix. You worry about their depth. Yep. Look, at the, look at the Dallas Mavericks. You worry about their defense. Well, you can get defense via depth. So maybe they go into the offseason, they re-sign their pieces, and then add a couple of pieces around them. Uh, you know what? Zach was sitting here, and I miss him so much. Me too. Because he says something, and I wish he was sitting here now so that he can enlighten you about the trust factor when it comes down to Kyrie Irving. When we th talk about Kyrie, and Zach said this last week, we saw how he bailed on Boston. We just saw how he bailed on his best friend, Kevin Durant. And what world is Dallas going to trust him? That's a different conversation. The conversation <laughs> I was right. trying to say is that if you have two superstars, you can build around yeah. them during the summer. And the fact of the matter is, at this point, they're 11th on the outside looking in. And to Perk's point, there's sort of all of these dominoes that could fall. It's just one game tonight, but it would be a step in the right direction. You can catch that game tonight as a part of our Wednesday doubleheader. The map, Sixers, 7.30 Eastern. Then it's off to the desert for Kevin Durant. His return as the Suns host the Timberwolves. We get it started on NBA Countdown. And by we, I mean the three of us. Us, but not Richard Jeff. Thank God. Bye. It's time for putting in work, though, yeah, presented by Upwork. PJ Washington. He you put up him. a career high 43 last night in a win against OKC Perk that included 22 in the fourth quarter. The Hornets have won three straight with PJ putting up 92 points over that stretch. So Washington is the first Hornets player with a 40 point game this season and the 54th, which is staggering, 54th player in the NBA to score 40 points. That's the most 40 point scores in a season in NBA history, seven more than the previous record. Six players have 10 40 point games. That includes Donovan Mitchell. So speaking of Mitchell, let's do a little coast to coast here. Check out what's going on around the rest of the league. Mitchell, he scored 44 points, but the Hawks, they walked away with a two point win. They're 38 and 38. Cheney, was this more about the Hawks or the Cavs? I think it's more about the Hawks because the Cavs are kind of firmly, I believe, at fourth in the East. They have 29 losses, and the next guy, the Knicks, are at 33. So they feel pretty good. So it's about the Hawks that are really fighting for their opportunities and trying to build some type of promise. They're at eighth, trying to move their way up. They could possibly get to sixth. So this was more about the Hawks fighting for something. Well, then the Raptors, they picked up a big win over the Miami Heat, improved to 10-1 and one in their last Ooh. 11 home games, the second best in the NBA over that span. Richard, why is Toronto such a tough place to play? Because it's a lot of fun, right? The energy, <laughs> the off the court. There's a lot of things going on in Toronto. It's one of the best cities that you could ever be in, play in. Fans are outstanding. Agreed. And they do have a ton of talent. They have a ton of talent. It just hasn't come together. Let's stick in the East here because the Wizards shot 55% against the Celtics mm. in their upset victory, the third highest percentage allowed by Boston this season. The Celtics, they entered the game with the fourth best defensive efficiency in the league, but they gave up 130 points in the loss. So let's take a listen to head coach Joe Mazzulla. 
think the basket was moving and we just couldn't see it. 